Hello, guys. Not a lot of people today looking for prop tech, right? Let's wait a little second. So, first of all, let me present our speakers today. So, we have Michael, Mikael, sorry, English is Michael, right? Mikael. Mikael is a partner and head of Europe of Fifth Wall. And if you don't know what is the Fifth Wall, it's a fund which has raised already 2.7 billion dollars in 17 funds. Correct? Yep. <laughs> A plus. <laughs> That's huge, guys. That's huge. And we also have Alistair, CEO and founder of Clickalia, number one prop tech in Europe and Mexico, largest financing round for a startup in Spain history, guys. 460 million dollars in 2021 by Thusfo and SoftBank. And guys, your growth was extremely great in six years from 11 employees to 700 employees, from 9 million revenue to 250 million revenue. The plus, guys, that's huge. <laughs> yeah, and let me present myself. My name is Alex Gold. I'm founder of Realists. Uh, it's AI for real estate investments, and we started the company just uh, one year ago, but we already achieved $12 million revenue. We sold $200 million of real estate. We operate in three countries. And the company is profitable, and zero VC money invested. <laughs> Let's go, guys. So, uh, frankly speaking, I have two types of questions. First of all, I have uh, in one iPhone softball questions like usually, like, Alistair, you launched a company in Portugal, in France, in Mexico. <coughs> so it's, it's typical questions, right? And I have different type of questions. So one hour ago, I asked you guys what questions you would you like to ask. And this is the type of questions like, why do you think, guys, the prop tech companies raise so, raise so much capital and many of them valued now less than the money they raised, like Open Their Compass, WeWork, and others? Do you guys want me to ask softball questions <laughs> like here? Or raise a hand who would like to see softball questions. OK, one, two. Please raise a hand if you would like to hear the real fireside chat questions. Please raise your hands. Guys, <laughs> OK, a little bit more. Let's start with the fire chat. Are you OK with this? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, let's start. So questions to you guys both, please. Uh, <clears throat> so scaling is about the money, right, in most cases. And so uh, the company raised a lot of money, right? So what do you think, guys, uh, how, first of all, you decide the companies to fundraise and what companies are ready for scaling and what companies are not? If they with the same business model, like i-buying model, with like dozens of companies across the world, why you just Clickale and why is that yeah, so special? Sure. So, so first of all, like we, we as, as you said in the introduction, like the AUM actually now is a little bit higher than that. <laughs> it's close to 3.5 billion. But anyway, like we are a big fund. We invest in some of the real estate tech and innovation and climate tech, right? So companies that help decarbonize or innovate their own real estate globally. Um, and the way we invest is actually uh, closer to how a private equity will do it. Meaning we see pretty much every single company, we see every deal. What we do is we try to understand from a thematic point of view what makes sense, right? So in the case of iBuyers, actually, um, it's, it will surprise you because we're investors in Open Door that we took public. We're investors in Loft, which is the biggest real estate company in uh, South America, based right. in Brazil. And we're investors in Clicalia, which is the largest uh, real estate tech company in Europe. Uh, and we don't like the iBuyer business model. And, what, and that doesn't make any sense. But basically, what it tells you is that 95 of the companies, to your earlier question, basically don't have unit economics or business models that basically improve what already exists in the market, right? What we're looking for is a technology, innovation around business model, and, and a team that can execute on a strategy that actually improves what exists in the market, right? In the case of Clicalia was real estate largest asset class in the world. If you want to invest in Southern Europe in real estate, you either buy uh, MPLs, so non-performing loans, non-performing mortgages from banks. It's one strategy. There's only so much you can generate out of that. You can build uh, 
buildings, right? So you either buy land and you, and you develop or you invest in a developer that already exists, or you buy entire buildings, right? Or portfolios that has been built by banks, right? Essentially, all of that is how institutional investors buy right now. That's not the, where the value is. The value is in buying one by one each property, renovating them, selling them through digital solutions, and making higher profit than everyone else, right? The only way to do that is through technology, right? If I am JP Morgan or Apollo, it takes me the same effort to buy an entire building that costs 30 million euros than buying one single apartment somewhere in the center of Madrid and renovating it, right? So through Clicalia technology is what allows you to institutionalize a non-institutionalized asset class, right? Clicalia's business model, as I tell Alistair usually, it's a journey, it's a staircase, and you need to earn the right to be playing in the market, right? Fast forward to today, and I will let Alistair tell the story of the business, but they are 3,000 transactions a year. That means the largest company transacting real estate in Spain, more than any of the <coughs> listed businesses you can think about. When you have that scale, and you have the team, the, the capabilities, now you earn the right to actually sell to institutional landlords, right? There is a capital issue. How do you grow there, right? Because you need to do it out of your own balance sheet. Sure. When we met Clicalia, basically, and to answer your question, I know it's a bit long, but we basically saw that Clicalia has better margins than any other company globally, right? Like we're investors in Opener, we're investors in Loft. I won't say the figures, but they're doing double-digit contribution margin post F, which is unheard of in real estate. On the rental side, double-digit yields. So it was basically a pretty straightforward business. Um, Alistair was trying to raise at the time with the team, I think, 30 million euros. We told them, we'll put you the 30 million, go find the 30 million you're looking for, and then we'll help you raise debt, and we'll help you bring other investors like SoftBank and so on. Um, and fast forward to today, basically, they're in the journey of basically, so right now, actually, we were just doing like a mini board session before coming here. Most of the business model now is not iBuyer, right? So iBuyer is how you enter the market, how you earn the right to play, and now they're doing services, mortgages, renovation, asset management, so pretty much any single service within the real estate uh, market, right? Yeah, that's interesting. Can I ask you a question? Like, he already answered so there's a question for you and for him. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't have explained it better. <laughs> so a lot of companies like Loft, Open Door, right? So you guys are scaling in terms of mortgage, rent, in different directions. Uh, and by the way, you have $250 million revenue. It's included the price of real estate you sold, Yes, it's included. It's included. So it's approximately 500 apartments with a price of $500,000. I mean, it depends on the ticket, yeah. Yeah, so it's approximately. And you guys have 700 staff, 700 staff for now. So once we divide uh, um, $250 million by 700, it's approximately $350,000. So it's approximately one staff one employee sold one apartment a year, approximately, right? Or my numbers are wrong? I mean, if you have the team <laughs> selling apartments, yeah, your numbers are, <coughs> are probably right. And the thing is, you, depending on how you want to grow a business, in our, from our point of view, you have to build many things, not only selling apartments. It's like playing chess. You have to move all the pawns at the same time. Um, you have to build the technology, you have to build the marketing, you have to build the culture of the company, you have to gather the data, understand the data, make sure that you are understanding the market. So there are like many other things besides selling apartments. I mean, that is what was done I got 100 years ago. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we're trying to do something different. Yeah, for sure. And you already guys in uh, Mexico, uh, France, Portugal, right? And Spain, of course. Yes. And what is the share of the revenue approximately between these countries? Yeah, probably Spain accounts today for 60%. 20% um, will go to uh, Mexico. That was the second country that we opened. And it's one of our core countries. And the other 20 is split between Portugal and France that were the last two countries that we opened. Gotcha. And let's speak about technology a little bit in terms of scaling. Mm -hmm. So the scaling is impossible without technology, right? Or possible, but you need like tons of capital, right? So to invest in this stuff. So let's speak about the AI, AI and scaling strategies. Why I'm asking? So two weeks ago, I just trained a chat GPT model with my knowledge, with the knowledge of my, you know, uh, YouTube videos and just connected it with uh, Telegram and WhatsApp and just 
ask my mom that I tell my mom that I changed the telephone number, <coughs> and grand grandmother also. So they have been speaking with me already ten days, and they didn't get it. Uh, it's not me. What do you think about AI things? LLM models, estimation models. So once you buy real estate, you should work on AVM a lot, right? So. Mm -hmm. What is the AI role on scaling? Okay, so I think that many people focus on AI, and AI obviously is the way of <clears throat> automatizing many of the processes. What it has a lot of value besides AI is the data. So if the quality of the data that you have is not the right data, obviously the output is not going to be the right one. No? So and, and we see many companies using data, then building synthetic data, and so on and so forth. I mean, and the beauty about Clicalia is that the, the quality of the data that we have is unparalleled. It's ba based on real transactions, based on real uh, leads, the ones that are converted, the ones that are not converted. All of that brings a lot of information. And once you have that, you are able to start using AI to get outputs. No? Uh, we believe a lot in using AI to automatize a, a part of the functions of the, of, the, of, the, of the processes of buying and selling a home so that we can free up time of the team so that we can think how to improve the, the customer experience and understand what's going to be new and how we can, we can tackle those needs of the market. One small question, and after I'll ask you, okay? You told me that uh, your data is based on real transactions on the market. How do you identify the real transactions, for example, in uh, Mexico or Portugal and Spain? So not a lot of countries uh, have a register of the deals. So there are marketplaces with tons of fake advertising. How do you identify that these are fake advertising, this is a real market price, and these are real transactions? Very simple, because we are the ones buying and selling. Sorry? Because we are the ones buying and selling. Okay, got it. So, but you still don't, don't control hard, thousands of transactions, right? So you're, you're buying, right, but you're buying like 500, 1,000 transactions a year in terms of all markets. And literally on the markets you operate, your share is like 0.2%. So you have to do a combination of <clears throat> what's the weight that you assess between the data that you have, your own data, where you, have where you know what's the quality of, the, of that data, and obviously you have external data that you have to integrate. The weight of that data, is, it, it obviously has to be less, and on top of that, you always need to have a human, someone from the company that is validating all those numbers. Thanks, Miguel. Question to you. Yeah, so or you look, would like to answer this question? No, no. So I want to touch on the topic of AI, right? Like um, a lot of companies think that changing their web name to AI <laughs> true, is becoming true. an AI business, <laughs> right? True. And that's not becoming an AI that's business. True, that's true. We're pretty um, bullish on applying. <clears throat> at the end of the day, as Alistair said, like what AI is doing is one, combining multiple sources of data, so image, video, text, language, speech into a single bucket. That's the real revolution, by the way. It's not the computing power. The computing power was there already, was used in other industries, right? Generative AI, it's somewhat uh, an improvement versus what existed, but the revolution is yet to come, right, in that space. That's why many companies, <coughs> like horizontal AI businesses, on the, not on the application layer, but on the technology layer, are spending so much capital, right? But I'll leave that aside. But we really think that you should apply technology to a business model that already exists and that actually improves what you are doing. I'll give you one example with Clicalia, right? It's pretty simple to ask AI to generate as many floor plans or designs of a particular apartment as you want, right? You can do that. That's using AI to do something that it's okay-ish in terms of adding value because you are basically replacing an architect that is generating multiple images of the same thing. Okay, great. That's an innovation. The real innovation is you really know what is the cost of every single render. You can integrate that with your architecture team, which is what Clicalia is doing. You can put it on a commercial 
team, and you can calculate, based on certain designs and certain uh, retrofit types, how much you can make if you rent or how much you can make if you sell, right? That allows, and we were, and sorry, Alistair, if I share data that I shouldn't, but 60% of the properties that Clicalia is selling today, they sell them before the property has actually been renovated or has actually been done, right? It's done purely through renders, right? So it's before you've actually, like, you've sold the property before you ever, like, got the mortgage or got the, or got the actual render. Being able to do that is the real innovation, right? If you were to do a company just on visualization, there is some value on it, right? But there's not that much value on it, right? There's a company called Matterport that has pretty much these yeah. guys any single asset globally. It's a $2 billion business, pretty successful business. The real um, innovation is being able to sell to every single broker globally and find the right, honestly, pricing and go-to-market model to get to brokers, right? It's not the technology itself. Technology itself, anyone, like there's multiple companies like Matterport. What Matterport did better was, was get to the brokers, right? So it's, it's a lot of execution, honestly, not that much. Like many of the companies here at South Summit, for example, are doing existing business models already, right? It's, I think, doing it differently and applying technology to an existing <coughs> business model that is the real differentiation to, again, to the title of the presentation, to move from five to 10 million of revenue to 100 to a billion of revenue. It's an execution play, right? And there's capital and technology involved, obviously, but it's pretty much the team and the execution, right? Right. In terms of scale and I buying business model, so like I remember three years, four years ago, I buying was the top thing of mind of everyone in terms of oh, Matterport, sorry, Matterport, Open Door and Loft. Uh, now these companies raise more money than they about. That's true. And they all companies tried now go not just directly to I buying because it's small margin. A lot of risk, you need a lot of capital, you need to, uh, to keep a lot of inventory on the market, and you start to do mortgage, rent, all this stuff. One question to you guys, I buying model is that or not? I mean, you can answer. <laughs> For us, it's honestly a means to an end. Right? Yeah. is you need to buy properties to be able to sell them and to be able to create funds for large corporates, right? So the IVAR, like, our thesis was always you buy retail and you sell institutional, right? In yeah. order to buy retail, you need to build the IVAR capabilities. There's a complete game to actually sell institutional, right? Because you need to build completely different capabilities, right? So. I guess the, the example that we like, and we are invested in all of these models, by the way, but it's invitation homes, right? Which is they buy single family rental homes in the US, they sold them to big institutional players that wanna basically invest in that type of assets. These guys are worth uh, about 12 billion today, right? And so it's the asset management and the recurring fees. It also takes an, an, a one-off, non-recurring business model on the buyer side to a recurring business model, fee model on the other side of the, of, the, of the equation, right? So it's turning capital heavy to capital light, and it's turning non-recurrent revenue to recurrent revenue. That's the journey that you need to follow. You start an iBuyer, but then you follow this, this journey, right? Sure. Yeah, le 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 yeah, let me add to what uh, Miguel is saying. <clears throat> so we can get into the specifics of asset light, heavy balance sheet, so on and so, and so forth, or we can try to understand <clears throat> how the world is evolving today, no? Um, what people are looking today? Certainty. And certainty across all the sectors. We can talk about Cabify. Uh, today, when you order a Cabify, you want to, you, you, need, to, you need to be sure that uh, the cab is going to arrive on time. When we talk about Netflix, same thing. And when we move to the real estate industry, there is the same need, no? So what is the iBuying? bringing to the, to the world today? Certainty. It's bringing certainty of when you're going to get the, the money of your home, uh, certainty of how much you're going to get for your home, and this is something that, is, that, it, that it has come to stay. Another thing is we can go into every single company and how they have executed and the pressure that they have had from the investors or from their boards to grow, and sometimes too much pressure um, have moved some of the companies to grow faster than they could. 
Uh, but if we go again to, and we move, we can see um, different industries uh, like Carvana today, same, same idea, I buyer in the auto industry. I mean, you see the market cap today has come back to, to levels of two years ago. Um, and, we, and we see today in all the uh, geographies that we are present that there is a lot of traction. So people want certainty, they want to be hassle-free. If they buy a home, they want it renovated, ready to move in, they want all in one, the mortgage included, and that's why what Clicalia and the rest of our buyers are trying to bring to the, to the world. Gosh. The other thing to add is that it's super market-driven, right? As in, in the US, everything is broker-driven, prices are public, and a, a broker is making uh, 4%, right, on average. Spain is extreme, and, and it's super institutionalized. Spain is extremely fragmented. The yields are massive. The price ranges for the same property in the same neighborhood can be transacted 20% up or down because many are owned by individuals, right? So they're not owned by corporates that have certain business models that have certain strategies to sell or not. So this business model works perfectly well in this market, right? Many other prop tech businesses, for example, if you're selling a a um, solu like a software solution for brokers, you're going to have a hard time in Spain because non -pro like close to zero properties are transacted in the overall scheme of things in Spain through brokers, right? Sure. It's mostly through marketplaces. So also certain business models are more attractive in certain markets than others, right? Sure, got it. So we have one minute more and the last question from me personally. Um, we're speaking about growing, you know, we're speaking about uh, scaling, right? But how to protect your local market, like Spain? Do you know, by the way, that Fifth Wall uh, took part in a round B of HASPI, uh, and this is like a direct competitor in mortgage, and they would like to build a marketplace of everything like inside. And they focus in UAE, where I'm based, and in Spain. And Realist now is entering the Spain market also. So in two months, Realist will give you estimations in 10 seconds by AI. So it's going to be like free estimations for everyone. How to protect the market I mean, from my, hungry people? <coughs> I mean, in, my, in my opinion, um, the market is huge. There is no need to be protected. Um, we're talking about 73 billion in transactions in Spain. Um, competition and competitors are good, are good for the customers, are good for the companies. They, they, they make you they force you to continue improve what you're offering. And so I'm a big believer in, in bringing competition to the market. And they also help you to explain the value of the product that you are offering. Yeah, precedent is wonderful for young startups. But once you're on the top level, you're number one in Spain by a prop tech, and there are companies that are attacking this market, it's probably not so good, right? What do you, do you think? <laughs> about competition in general or, or, or specifically? Uh, yeah, so that first of all, you funded the company of competitor. Alex, mm. Alex. we sure. actually are out of time. We run out of time. So thank you guys for watching this, and uh, I think you enjoy it, right? Okay, thank you very much. Sorry.